In this mini tutorial, we're going to think um, in relatively basic terms about a very important pathway running through the brain stem called the medial longitudinal fasciculus. And this pathway is crucial um, in coordinating the movements of the eyes uh, and also making sure that the eyes uh, move in a, such a way as to compensate for movements of the head. So let's start off by drawing um, a, a zoomed in. Um, representation of the brain stem. So here is the um, midbrain, pons, and medulla going into the cord. So there's the cord, the medulla, the pons, and the midbrain, like that. Okay, and as ever, we're going to draw on um, our midline. We're going to use a grey dotted grey line to show the midline and this is important because the medial longitudinal fasciculus does cross the midline uh, because of its importance in coordinating conjugate movements of the left and right eyes. The next thing I want to draw on is some of the brain stem nuclei which are involved in moving the eyes. Um, so you'll recall that um, eye movements are mediated by the ocular motor trochlear and abducens nerves. Now these nerves contain motor neurons, lower motor neurons, which supply the different extraocular muscles. And the cell bodies of those lower motor neurons reside within discrete nuclei within the brainstem. So these, it's, it's just like the ventral horn in the spinal cord, but the motor neurons live in an even more discrete area that we can see quite clearly. So in red, um, I'm going to draw on the oculomotor nuclei. So here are the oculomotor nuclei. In blue, I'm going to draw on the trochlear nuclei. And you'll notice that both of these are in the midbrain. And then more caudal to this, I'm going to draw on the abducens nuclei. Okay, so there are the green abducens nuclei. Furthermore, I'm going to draw on a sensory nucleus. Okay, so the nuclei that we've drawn so far have been um, motor nuclei, which are involved in uh, driving extraocular muscles. But in yellow, I'm going to draw on a sensory nucleus. And this sensory nucleus here is the vestibular nucleus and, and there's one on each side, a left and a right vestibular nucleus and what these nuclei are involved with is receiving information about the position of the head um, from the inner ear. So the vestibular nuclei receive information about the position of the head and that's coming from the uh, vestibular apparatus in the inner ear. So let's um, just um, remind you what these different things are. So we've said in red, we've got the ocular motor nucleus. Um, in blue, we've got the trochlear nucleus. In green, we've got the abducens nucleus. And in yellow, we've got the vestibular nucleus, one on each side. Now, all of these nuclei are in fact connected together. Uh, and I'm going to give you uh, one example of why this really needs to be the case. So on the left hand side, I'm going to draw um, a diagram of the eyes. Okay, so here are the eyes. And this is just a top down view as if we'd done a transverse section through the head. Looking down into the orbits, okay, so here are the eyeballs, here are the pupils, there, okay. And we're going to say that this is the left and this is the right. Likewise, on our diagram on the right-hand side, uh, we're going to say this is the left and this is the right, slightly differing from our usual convention. Now... We're going to think about how do we get our gaze to shift to the left. So how do we look to the left? 
Um, and of course, both pupils need to move by the same amount to the left to stop us from getting diplopia. Uh, and as you'll recall from head and neck, the way that we do this is, is that we, of course, need to use the left lateral rectus. OK, so we need to use the left lateral rectus. And we need to use the right medial rectus. OK. So in order to shift our gaze to the left, we need to contract simultaneously the left lateral rectus and the right medial rectus. If, if those don't contract simultaneously, we will get diplopia as we're looking towards the left-hand side. So how is this achieved? Well, the coordinated action of those two muscles is achieved by connecting together the um, abducens and ocular motor nuclei. Okay? So here's our green abducens connected to our red ocular motor nucleus. Likewise, if we want to look to the right, well, we're going to need to connect the green abducens nucleus to the red ocular motor nucleus, but in the opposite direction. So what we have in the medial longitudinal fasciculus is a whole load of crisscrossing connections between the different nuclei responsible for the movements of the eyes. Okay? And it's a very complex pathway. And basically any combination of eye movements that you can think of that need to be coordinated across the two sides, there's a connection for that in the medial longitudinal fasciculus. Now I have no expectations that you understand the details of the specific connections in here with regard to um, excitatory or inhibitory connections, anything like that. You just need to be aware that these pathways exist um, and that they're able to coordinate eye movements. Now, there's something else we need to think about with regard to the uh, medial longitudinal fasciculus, and that is its connections with the vestibular nuclei. Now, I'm going to give you um, maybe a silly example here, um, but here is a, a slope, and we've got a little man who's going to walk up that slope, okay? Now, as you know, if you're walking up a slope, you don't end up standing on the slope at an angle like this, do you? Okay. What you end up doing is compensating in your posture and standing on this sloped surface so that you're still in the vertical position. So your body knows where it is in space and it's able to compensate for that. In this case, it's with regard to the posture of the body, um, but equally, the body is able to compensate for the posture of the head when the head is held at a different angle. And it does this via the vestibular nuclei, because the vestibular nuclei are connected to the medial longitudinal fasciculus. Okay, So the vestibular nuclei connect to the MLF, and they are able to tell the um, extraocular muscles to move in a compensatory fashion so that we're able to maintain a level horizon. Furthermore, all of these nuclei that we've just described send descending connections down into the spinal cord, enabling us to generate compensatory movements of the neck um, or of the trunk in order to keep us in a neutral position. So what we've got is an exceptionally elegant system for maintaining a level horizon and this is really really important um, particularly in, in a bipedal species such as us um, where we're constantly needing to make adjustments to our posture um, to, to keep a clear um, image landing on our retinas. Now one last thing um, I want you to just think about what could happen if there was damage in this pathway. Um, so let's add a lesion on here. So if there was, say, a multiple sclerosis plaque at this point here, the problem that we would have would be that we'd, we wouldn't be able to coordinate the movements of 
the lateral rectus, mediated by the abducens nucleus, and the medial rectus, mediated by the ocular motor nucleus. So what we would have would be we, we would lose conjugate eye movements, all right? And we would develop a condition known as internuclear ophthalmoplegia, okay? And you might want to do some reading about this, internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Okay? And all, and all that this means is it's paralysis of the eyeballs caused by loss of connections between cranial nerve nuclei. One last thing um, I just want to mention from a clinical point of view um, is it's worthwhile, um, if you want more clinical relevance for the medial longitudinal fasciculus, going and reading um, about the doll's eye reflex, the doll's eye reflex. Uh, this is a very interesting reflex um, which involves connections between the vestibular and ocular motor nuclei. Um, and it forms uh, one test that you can use in assessing brainstem death. So do go away and read about that. Okay.